This is Shop Culture. I'm Courtney Kaysen, and this is a podcast dedicated to the exploration of the obsession and celebration of all things shopping. Today on Shop Culture, we're going to be hanging out with Lori Goldstein, who is probably one of the most celebrated stylists of our times. She's also a designer with an incredible collection at QVC. And of course, she is the go-to for many couture collections on creating their looks that we highly covet. We are here with Lori Goldstein. She's a stylist, a designer, and aficionado of the more fabulous things in life. And I'd like everybody to know that as I look deeply into your eyes right now, you do have on rose-colored glasses. Of course. We need them on a blurry Monday, but I do like to see things through rose-colored glasses. Well, and I think a lot of people appreciate that about you. We start the podcast with everyone with the question, what is the last thing that you purchased? A Marnie dress that I wore to um, this talk that I was giving. So, you know, it's very specific so I can remember it. So cute. Uh, Let's talk about how you became a shopping guru because I think those who know you best know that your favorite sport is shopping. Do you have an early childhood memory of like the first time that you went shopping, that you got something wonderful? Were you with your mom? Like, tell us a story. Um, I do have early memories. I remember I really like to be in the stores too, and I like to look around, but I have this very early memory, their memories, that every Saturday in Columbus, Ohio, we would go with my grandma Hannah on the bus down to downtown um, Columbus and go to Lazarus, which was um, the department store, which is pretty much now Macy's and Bloomingdale's. And I just felt like a grown-up. I loved looking around. I loved every department. And my sister and I would get lost, and we would hear my grandmother calling our names, and we would pretend we didn't hear her. And we would just continue on shopping like um, we we were grown-ups. So it was a very grown-up thing to do. And also, again, I just love looking at things. It was kind of like our art museum um, at that time. (laughs) (laughs) We love that. You know, I feel like, because I've known you for so long, you seem to be this rebel with an amazing cause to make (laughs) us look and feel our best. And I even want to go back to your teenage years, because like, what's something that you purchased where you're like, ooh, this is going to get me into some trouble on a Friday or Saturday? Um, Or during the week. Yeah. um, (laughs) Because I actually was the one, my sister and I and friends of ours that were two sisters were actually the ones that got the dress code changed um, in high school because I was a rebel and I don't remember specifically, I loved, loved, loved clothes and there are many things. I mean, we used to wear these peasant blouses and of course jeans were just, you know, so important and, you know, we were kind of hippies. I mean, we, I, I was a little young to be out there, but in suburban Ohio, I felt like I was a, you know, a hippie and that we, that whole aesthetic, um, but we got the dress code changed to be able to wear p- women to wear pants, girls to wear pants to school and to wear uh, skirts and dresses that were of any um, length. So I always love that because I remember I'd pull my skirts up and wear them short. And then even though I could pull them down when I got called to the principal's office, I wouldn't um, on principle. No pun intended. So there you go. (laughs) Well, I want to throw it back to hipster logo for a minute, Lori Goldstein. If you were going to leave Ohio in the dust, what car would you have driven off in? Well, I did leave Ohio in the dust, and it was a Toyota Celica. Um, (laughs) So not so romantic, but um, it was a fabulous car. My first car was like from a junkyard, and so this was like this great car, and I drove cross-country and moved to Los Angeles. So you like vintage from an early age. Yes. Yes, I did, and I liked adventure from an early age. Well, last question question regarding kind of this early idea of Lori in Ohio. Did you ever take anything from Marsha, your mother's closet, and just say, like, Marsha, look, it looks better on me? Mm, I, I re- we had such different style that I didn't, but what who had the same style, and I always say these are the jeans I got, was Marsha's mother, Gladys, who was Gaga Gladys, the original Gaga. Amazed. And she 
my only memories of Gaga were in Leopard or Tiger. Um, and she was my inspiration. And I would have taken those. But what I did get was when Gaga, bless her soul, passed away. I got all of her jewelry, which wasn't real, which was like, but fabulous. Like back then, costume jewelry was amazing. And as kids, we used to go to Chicago and like play. She lived on the south side. We weren't allowed out of the house. So we would just hang out at Gaga, in Gaga's room and play with her jewelry. And that's kind of what I used for years as a stylist. All the jewelry you see in my really early works is all of Gaga's jewelry. All right. So you leave Ohio. What direction are you headed in? East to New York or west to L.A.? Um I should have been headed east, but I headed west, which was actually incredible. And that is where I met the legendary Fred Siegel, who brought me on a buying trip to New York. And as soon as I saw that skyline, I knew that I would be moving to New York City. So I like that I took that twist. Yeah. Because, you know, L.A. is very alluring. And every time I think I want to move here, I remember that I'd already lived there and I love New York. So... <laughs> It was a good thing. <laughs> well, let's talk about Fred Siegel for a minute because even now going out to California, that's still one of the most interesting and dare I say spellbinding department stores that you can walk into as a consumer. So if you are out there, how does – if you are from middle of nowhere Ohio or middle of nowhere Georgia, <laughs> how do you walk into Fred Siegel and find what you were meant to find? How do you shop without feeling you know, pressured to get anything? Like what's your take? on that? Well, that's a great question because the beauty of Fred Siegel is that it's shops within shops. So they've curated it great. And, and so if you want jeans, you go into the jean room and I must say still to this day, they have incredible help. there, like people who love their job and they will help you. And they kind of know we're all from somewhere else. Um, so you know, that's really a nice shopping experience because they really do have all these little rooms from prices to um, style. So that's a great shop to go into if you are going to L.A. and not be overwhelmed. And it's a very welcoming store, too, because that's a whole conversation in shopping, too, where you walk in. It's like, hi, anyone. And so, you know, Fred Siegel's a really nice place. And probably on every list, if, the, you know, you get a list of like, where should I go in L.A.? Good place to go. When you decided to make a career out of being a stylist, was there some part of you that was like, hey, I got this because I shop for sport. I love to shop. I know what's in. Oh, like, did you ever think that that was going to be what it turned out to be? I never in a million years thought it would turn out what it has become. But I knew two things growing up that I was leaving Ohio and I loved clothes. So um, both of those college education to me um, thoughts really did serve me well. I knew that I would, I, I knew that I had to do what I loved and I always loved clothes. That's how I got to express myself. Like it seems like I'm not shy, but I'm not really like, you know, I'm introverted. I wouldn't, I'm not shy. And so I really got to express myself and still do through clothes. And that's really what I'm doing today at QVC and that I've always wanted to empower before we even knew that word. Um, women, like be who you are. So somehow the dream came true. So when you become this stylist that is now shopping for private clients that are styling these editorial campaigns, who did you love shopping for more? This idea of this woman that maybe had no budget. Did you love the fabulous pop stars like a Madonna? Like who did you have the most fun with creating their version of expression that maybe they didn't know existed? Honestly, all of them. Um, because to me, they're all people. So it's like, I love doing a makeover, which I believe maybe we've been involved with together where somebody is so afraid to, you know, put on a pair of leggings or I've never worn a pair of jeans to, you know, I don't know what my style is to really seeing them come alive like that. Obviously, somebody like a Madonna or somebody that's like minded like me, it's so fun to, you know, just go out. I mean, I worked with Demi Moore for years personally, and I would just go into Barney's or whatever store and just, you know, I love this, I love this, I love this. And we had the same aesthetic. So it was just like, okay, well, one day maybe all this will be for me. But in yeah. the meantime, this is just fun pulling it for her. 
Um, but my most favorite work was always editorials, especially yes. with somebody like a Stephen Mizell who loved fashion as much as I did. And that wasn't necessarily in the stores even. That was the luxury of shopping in every designer showroom and being able to pull anything and everything because I was working with Steven on Italian Vogue's on these really important, you know, editorials. And I mean, just the most gorgeous clothes, you know, a dress made by 50 women that I've had the luxury of seeing make and cry. It's amazing. Um, to, you know, that was, that was just my best memories because we just would pull in and it was crazy. Courtney, you would, you would die. It's like literally 50 racks of the most gorgeous clothes that are out for the season. Shoes, jewelry, real Jews, ten, uh, jewels, 10 guards, like watching over the jewelry. And I, you know, um, just, and then creating just insane, glorious photographs. That's just was my favorite. And so when you're on these shoots, a lot of times privy to what the looks are before the collections come out. Do you ever, like, are you asking like, hey, that's an amazing, you know, faux fur jacket. That's an amazing scarf. Like, can I, can I bring that home with me? Is that like available for purchase? Like, um, is there any shopping that can be done when you're curating for other people? No. But, Does that hurt your feelings? Yeah, no, because... I, the process is when we're styling and when we're creating a show, I know that these, um, these pieces have to be used. So the process is every magazine in the world has access to the one item that went down the runway. There's not two, there's not three. So you know the process that for the next four months, that one item is going to go around the world being photographed by every single editor that wants it. Um, but I also know when I was on the campaign shooting, which is, you know, and there were the one shoe that, you know, the many shoes that didn't go down the runway that you might love and that maybe that bag could be mine if I love it so much. And do you guys really need this? And I'll show it and wear it every day. That might become mine. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> Respect. <laughs> These look better on me, right? Right. I is love that. My size? <laughs> well, and that kind of brings me to my next question. With all of these amazing style outs that you've done from Prada to Dolce Gabbana to Tiffany Versace, you know, Dennis Basso. Is there a certain point where you look at a piece and you're like, when that comes out, I'm going to find a way to justify to own it. Absolutely. I mean, there's those pieces that you know are going to be yours and you just claim it. Like, Absolutely. I mean, you just know. I mean, that's kind of, you know, what shopping is like. Some of it spur of the moment, of course. Mm -hmm. It's like, I want a new t-shirt, which yours is adorable, by the way. Um, it's got llamas on it, I I'd like it. to say. Yes. And so, you know, and you're, we're just kind of like going out and you end up in a store and you buy that day. And then there's other pieces you know that you cannot live without. And you will do anything you can. I mean, for example, when I was on a shoot and there was something like that, I mean, I remember specifically we were doing um, couture. We were shooting couture. There was a pair of velvet Chanel shoes, like Mary Jane, that are made, they're handmade by, you know, one of the oldest, like, couturier, like, shoe um factories in Paris, which not a lot of shoes are made. And, um, those were going to be mine. And so, and, and, you know, I just told everyone to the point where at the end of the season, they were sent to me and they were mine and I love them. So yes. At what point in your life would you say, you wanted something so badly that you were like palms were sweating for it to arrive to your door. And it can be when you were, it can be when you were broke. It can be when you found success. Like oh, what have you been you so kidding? excitedly nervous about? I was maybe, and I might be pushing it maybe seven. <laughs> I mean, this goes back to a long <laughs> lineage of needing, wanting, loving. I mean, I loved clothes since the day I was born. I don't know why. I mean, my, Marsha did have style and my stepfather was in the business. So we got to go to all the sample sales and like, you know, there were just pieces I had to have. Clothing really told the story for me always. Was there a moment when you lived in LA that you were first starting out that maybe you had purchased some things where you're like, huh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to make my rent this month. <laughs> 
Oh, of course, Courtney. <laughs> Everywhere I've ever lived. <laughs> do I pay the rent or do I get these shoes? It's always a dilemma. And what has one out? Well, there were a few nights that we left our apartment. No. Um, <laughs> um, somehow I always worked it out. You know, I'm a good trader. If I, you know, I have these that I don't love. Can I, you buy these and I get these. And, yeah. You know, it's always, it's a, you know, I think that that's in my blood, like old school trading. I'm still good at that. So this is where I want you to become our shopping therapist for mm-hmm. a moment, because I think with podcasts, you reach so many different people of economic backgrounds and honestly, different habits with the way mm-hmm. that they shop. And so if you are a woman right now and you have $500, you have $1,000 or you have five thousand dollars. What are you? What to you right now is the most luxurious thing that you can buy that you would never regret? Well, I think you always need an incredible coat. I mean, this is what you know. Form and function are always you know going to weigh out, and coats and shoes and bags always feel great to a woman so you know that's where i would put my money Mm -hmm. and where you know the shoes especially can change an outfit like all of your clothes and then you can start playing with them and i wouldn't say necessarily just a pair of normal shoes like maybe think outside your box in those categories because they really can change your wardrobe and go a long way no matter what you know price whatever your budget is well, that's really interesting because I think and a jewelry lo- and and jewelry. We can't forget about jewelry. No. Okay, so well, that brings an extra like interesting question. Like, if you're on the higher end of the budget, do you say splurge for a piece of jewelry that you can wear every day? That- yes, and even if it's not the higher budget, I mean. You know, it depends what it is, but a gorgeous pair of Diamondique earrings. Like, really, there's so many things that are out there today that don't have to be expensive that can really give you that look. Yeah. So, you know, jewelry, handbag shoes, all of that, no matter what price, it's it's the kind. Like, you know, I'm going to say this, and it's crazy, and probably my team's going to be like, who are you? But, like, a great pair of diamond studs. You know, and they don't have to be huge. In fact, yeah. I just bought a pair. I haven't worn earrings for a long time that are the tiniest that they come. And so I love that look. And it, but and it's just times where it just pulls it all together. So I think that those become your important pieces. Mm-hmm. And then you can have fun with the frivolous dollars that come along the way. Throughout your life, what has been your biggest investment that you've like never regretted? You waited your whole life to bring home. Probably my first Birkin bag. Um, Wait a second. Was there a waiting list? Did you have to ask a friend of a friend? Was it brand new? Was it used? Tell us everything. My first one was used. There were a lot and still are um, great consignment shops in New York City. You have to know your source. Um, And there are great sources. And it is kind of that thing of like this whole like little world. And... um, it, it, I love it. I love it for every reason, not because I want anyone to see it, because I do collect. I have a collection over the years. You know, that's something I do collect. But it's for me, and it's like building this collection, and I look at it like art. So if you love something, you know, and aspire to something, it does, it like, go for something, you know, as we call reuse, there's so many great places today to get things. We're all women and we're all trading and we get sick of things. And what do they say? Mm -hmm. One man's garbage is another man's. And it's true. You know, we're, and it's not garbage. It's just like, you know, I've carried a bag for a long time and I love it still, but I don't need it anymore. Let someone else enjoy it. And that's this whole cool way of, you know, looking at the new shopping experience, I think. Well, and a lot of times when we make these investment purchases, some of us feel very nervous, like to even carry it out. Do you say like fully commit to carrying it out seven days and get more comfortable with it? Because a lot of times when you make that investment, you're like, I don't, I don't want to mess anything up. And I'm the same way. Um, But yes, if you love it, and so many things get better with age. I mean, so many things I have, especially in the shoe and bag department where, you know, 
they just get more beautiful. So they look better with age instead of, oh, I'm carrying my brand new bag. It yeah. looks good when it's like, I've had this bag and it's mine and I own it. Well, and in the world where like any part of fashion or accessories at some point seems cyclical, how do you know what to hold on to and how do you know what to think about purchasing for the future? You know, I think like everything, like, you know, I have a book called Style is Instinct and I kind of live my life that way. Um, Are there things that I've released that I regret? I'll have a moment and then I realize, you know, they're just things. So that's where we can have fun with shopping and fun with everything we own. And I think our instinct tells us like, you know, I love this ring, but I'm not going to wear this right now, but I'm going to put this away. And yeah. I think we just know. And then there's things where it's like, why did I buy that? You kind of knew that from the beginning, right? And so you wore it because you had to live with that mistake, but then you can release it. And what's your favorite time of year to shop? When do you think there are the best deals? When do you feel most excited to shop? I've learned to kind of shop a little early. I used to not be that person for major pieces. And this sounds so crazy, and I say it here at QVC all the time. Um, I do love fall clothes. I think they're gorgeous. It is absolutely not my favorite season. I love spring, and I love summer so much. But I think fashion, um, like any designer who really starts – you're sort of told on a level like you should start with a fall collection because you can really tell your tale so much better. Yeah. Um, it's just the layering and the different, you know, um, knits and textures and your coats and hats and all of that. So fall's just gorgeous. When you decide to go shopping, because you may make this an all-day event, what is the signature drink that you carry in your hand? Oh, my God. You are so cute. I'm so boring. I can't waste my, a pan for anything. <laughs> I basically have um, a crossbody bag on. And I here's the thing. I am the fastest shopper you will ever shop with. I just I can go into a store. And this is the thing. I eyeball and then I sniff out. I'm telling you, I can find those things. And that's when I realized there's a real art to shopping. And when people used to tell me um, they didn't like shopping, I was like, what? But I get it. And that's why I realized we have a great service for women who don't like to shop. I love it. But it's really just that thing. I'm with my girls and their shoppers, and that's why they do what they do. Like, it's what... It's what we do. And there is a purpose. It's very inspiring. And you can go with um, the thought of I'm not going to buy anything. But I'm just going to go look because the truth is, Courtney, is there's so many artists out there presenting what they do and love in these stores. And even though you can't afford some of it, to just see the love and the materials and the art that goes into them is very inspiring, I think. Well, last question, and this can be throughout the span of your entire lifetime. Whoa. I think we all break for a great sale. (laughs) Yes. What has been your favorite, I got it on sale, God wanted me to have it, it was just my turn, best thing you've ever bought? Oh, my goodness. I don't know, but I do know the feeling when I do that. That's when you have to tell everybody. This was two thousand dollars marked down to twelve hundred, marked down to seven hundred. Take fifty off, and I got it for. And, that's when you, and there's been a lot of those, but that's when you know it's like yes, it's like when you get that pitter patter yes. in your heart. I got it. Yeah, I think it's all about listening to your intuition. Yes. And for so many of us, I feel like you've now given us permission to do that. Please, I am giving you permission to do that. Lori Goldstein, thank you so much. Thank you, Courtney.